I've converted my original color photograph into a black and white interpretation by adding a black and white adjustment layer in Photoshop that allows me to lighten and darken various areas of the image based on their original color value, but perhaps more importantly, it allows me to apply that adjustment in a targeted way. By default, an adjustment layer will affect the entire image. The reason for that is that the adjustment layer comes with a layer mask that is filled with white. And in the context of a layer mask, black blocks and white reveals. In other words, if a layer mask is completely white, then the adjustment will be visible for the entire image. If the layer mask is filled with black, then the adjustment is blocked for the entire image. I'll go ahead and invert that layer mask, for example, by pressing Control-I on Windows or Command-I on Macintosh with the layer mask active. And you can see the layer mask is now filled with black, and so the black and white adjustment is not visible anywhere in the photo. I'll go ahead and invert again so that we're back to a white layer mask and so that the black and white adjustment is affecting the entire image. My concept for this image is to bring back some of the original color. Specifically, I want to bring back the yellow paint that is visible on the paint roller as well as the freshly painted stripe. And I might also want to bring back the color in the stripe in the background. And conceptually, I might want to bring back the color for the paint bucket. I'm not sure about that yet. But I don't want the yellow to be visible in the old painted lines, the lines that are being repainted here. And so I need to be selective about where I'm revealing the original image versus the black and white interpretation. So in this case, what I want to do is keep the black and white adjustment visible for most of the image and block the adjustment, allowing the original color to show through for certain portions of the image. And the easiest way to accomplish that is to use the brush tool. I'll go ahead and choose the brush tool from the toolbox. I'll click on the brush pop-up. And in this case, I think I'd like to use a soft edge brush. I might fine tune that a little bit later, but I'll make sure that the hardness is set to 0%. I won't worry about the size because I'll adjust that on the fly, but I do wanna make sure that the mode is set to normal. I'll bring the opacity back up to 100%. I had it at a reduced value previously. The flow I don't need to worry about because I'm not turning on the airbrush feature. So at this point, I'm ready to work with the overall settings for the brush. I'll then press the letter D on the keyboard to get the default colors, which in the context of working on a layer mask, causes the foreground color to be white and the background color to be black. I can switch back and forth between those default colors of black and white by simply pressing the letter X for exchange on the keyboard. In this case, I have a layer mask that's already filled with white. I want to paint black into certain areas, and so I'll press X as needed to make sure that black is my current foreground color. You can see that toward the bottom of the toolbox here. And then I'm ready to get to work. So I'll bring my mouse out over the image and then use the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard to adjust the size of the brush. The right square bracket key will increase the size of the brush, and the left square bracket key will decrease the size of the brush. I'll go ahead then with that brush size adjusted and simply click and drag in order to paint with black, which is blocking the black and white adjustment and revealing the original color in the photograph. So in this case, just revealing that yellow line and the yellow paint that is on the paint roller, for example. In this particular photo, I've got quite a bit of flexibility because the asphalt, for the most part, is completely gray. And so if I paint outside of the yellow line here, I don't really need to worry too much because I would just be revealing the gray that was already there. In front of that paint roller, it would be a little bit more of an issue because I would be revealing some of that old paint. But I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. So I'll hold the Control and Spacebar keys at the same time on Windows or the command and spacebar keys at the same time on Macintosh, and then I will click and drag over toward the right in order to zoom in on that area of the image. I can then hold the spacebar key as needed to access the hand tool so that I can click and drag the image around a little bit and look at different areas. 
And if you look very closely in front of the roller, sure enough, I painted outside of the lines as it were, and I'm now revealing a little bit of that yellow color in front of the roller. So I'm going to start off by reducing the size of the brush by pressing the left square bracket key on the keyboard a few times, and then I'll press the letter X on the keyboard so that now white is my foreground color. So now I'm going to paint with white in order to reveal the adjustment. In other words, to reveal the conversion to black and white in this area. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit more closely so you can see better, and then I will paint in that area of the image. Now I've gone in the other direction and I've covered up a little bit of the yellow on that paint roller. So I'll go ahead and press the letter X on the keyboard once again so that black is my foreground color, and then I will paint with that black color to block the black and white adjustment so that the roller in this case is not being converted to black and white, instead allowing the original color, that yellow color, to show through. I'll go ahead and take a look here. I might want to reveal this yellow paint that's sort of stuck to part of the roller here. I think that yellow is kind of nice. That's looking pretty good. I'll just make sure that all of the edges here are covered very nicely that I have a good degree of accuracy as far as that layer mask. Now, again, in this case, I don't have to be quite as perfectly careful as I might in other situations, but I still want to check my work and make sure that I'm not introducing any problems. Here, for example, I have some spilled paint, and so I have to decide, do I want to reveal the original yellow color or do I want to keep this in black and white? I think in this case, I'd prefer to have it black and white, so I'll press the letter X in order to switch the foreground and background colors so that white is my foreground color. I'll increase the size of the brush just a little bit, and now I'm painting with white to reveal the black and white adjustment, which will cause this area to also be interpreted as black and white, removing the color from that area of the photo. I'll go ahead and pan across, once again holding the space bar to access the hand tool temporarily, and I'll pan across, and you can see that my original brush stroke actually went outside into this area, and it overlapped a little with the bucket here, and so I'm revealing some color there. I think I'd prefer for the bucket to be black and white, so I'll go ahead and increase the size of the brush here a little bit with the right square bracket key on the keyboard. My foreground color is currently set to white, and so I'll go ahead and paint in that black and white adjustment into this area. I'll hold the space bar key and pan across and clean up the rest of that area of the photo as well. But otherwise, I think we're in good shape. I'll press Control-0 on Windows or Command-0 on Macintosh in order to resize the image to fit the available space. And that looks like a very good start, but I think I also want this line in the background to be in yellow. And so I'll hold the control and spacebar keys on Windows or the command and spacebar keys on Macintosh and click and drag to zoom in on this area of the photo. And then once again, I want to paint with black. So I'll press the letter X on the keyboard to switch the foreground and background colors and paint with black to block the black and white adjustment and reveal the original color. And so I'll paint carefully along that edge then I'll hold the spacebar key and click and drag to pan across. And once again, another bit of painting here to reveal that yellow color. And now I'm going to want to make sure not to overlap with the handle for the paint roller because there might be some additional paint, for example, on that stick. And so I'll go ahead and reduce the size of my brush and paint very carefully right up into there. That looks pretty good. I think I have just a little bit of yellow being revealed here, so I'll press X to get white as my foreground color and paint on that area to clean that up. And then once again, pan across. I'll use a small brush and paint very carefully along this edge. I've gone a little bit into the handle there, the stick that's being used as a handle for the paint roller, so I'll go back and clean that up. There we go, and then I'll switch back to black and paint right up against that edge. But you can see that when performing this type of work, very often you'll need to go back and forth cleaning up your work as you go. And that's one of the challenges of working with a layer mask is getting that layer mask to perfectly reflect the areas that you want to adjust 
versus those that you don't want to adjust. Generally, I focus my attention along the edge of the area that I want to adjust versus not adjust, and then I can use a little bit larger brush to fill in the gaps in between. That's starting to look pretty good there. And I'll pan across one more time to get to the edge of the photo, and I'll carry that layer mask painting through. That looks to be pretty good. I'll go ahead and clean up just a little bit. There's some green showing up there. There we go. And then back into the painted area. And I think we're in good shape. So I'll press Control-0 or Command-0 once again. And I do indeed think that I prefer the image with both of those painted lines appearing in their original yellow. I'll go ahead and hold the Shift key and then click on the layer mask so that we can see the layer mask disabled. In other words, the ability to see the adjustment affecting the entire image. And then I will shift click once again on that layer mask to get back to the masked version of the image. So I started off with a black and white adjustment layer that causes the entire image to appear as black and white. But then with a little bit of painting, I'm able to reveal color only in the areas where I want it.